in this very first section will be very naive and more or less trace back the steps we did in the very first glimpse at grounding we had in the introductory section, where it's more or less about systematically replacing all variables. Okay, so to this end, uh, as mentioned before, we will be introducing an example and a more complex example, but one that you already know, namely the Hamiltonian cycle problem. You may remember this is more or less the core problem of the traveling salesperson problem, just that here we don't have any optimization involved. If you don't remember, keep in mind the idea is to find a path, actually a cycle through this graph, that hits all uh, nodes or all villages or all towns, cities, Städte, Dörfer, <laughs> anyway, um, so that each city is only visited exactly once or each node is traversed exactly once. Okay, that's more or less the idea. And this is the e exemplary uh, graph we are looking at with these uh, four cities, A, B, C, D, ooh, ooh. and we represent it in the same way as we represented actually way before the, um, the graph coloring problem where we have a unary predicate node to, to distinguish the nodes A, B, C and D or the vertices and then the edges, the, again these are directed edges so perhaps arc may be a better predicate name, I just use edge for simplicity so we have an, an edge from A to B, this is this guy here that goes from here to here and all of them are represented here so, so that we have seven edges. Uh, and one city is distinguished as the starting node, this is the one with the two cycles here. Actually, when going through this, we will be looking at variable instantiations with these uh, constants here. So you may want to keep in mind that we have four cities, uh, seven roads between them, because when we look at how, much, how, how many instances we actually get, these numbers will play a role. Anyway, so this is the problem instance, and you may uh, remember from the modeling section, and then I stopped with all these backward references, that an instance always comes with an encoding and this encoding actually is able to solve all the instances of the problem class. Okay, so here's the encoding of the Hamiltonian cycle uh, problem. And keep in mind that we want to talk about grounding algorithms that work with normal logic programs. Hence, as you see here, this is a, a, a very unfancy encoding where we are just using uh, normal rules or integrity constraints and keep you may remember actually in the, and here's again a backward reference that integrity constraints can be understood as normal rules with an artificial hat so this is not really something uh, special here and uh, yeah so then more or less we generate four types of constraints and the first two we generate uh, the paths and this is more or less our Hamiltonian cycle which is modeled by an even loop, so x, y uh, belongs to the pass if it is not omitted and uh, if it is not on the pass it has been omitted. And since we have here an even cycle through these guys, right, you see that here? Pass, not omit, omit, not pass, pass, we more or less get for each edge which we have here either that it's on the pass or it has been omitted. And this is our guess. Okay, and then the the, the, the other rules more or less uh, test our, our guess, this is our tester. Uh, the next two rules check what, that there is at most, or make sure that there is at most one incoming and one outgoing edge uh, for each city, right? So it must not be the case that you go in from x to y and you go also in from another city x prime into y. And rather than writing here unequal, which actually is the semantics, we can, we can save ground instances by simply writing smaller. And that's perhaps something you may want to think about, but this more or less reduces uh, the number of instances of each integrity constraint by half, right? Because you don't have to generate the integrity constraint where you switch the x and the x prime in here, uh, and you once have it in this way and once you have it in that way, right? Okay, and then I will zip it and let you think about it. Then there is another uh, constraint here that says that at least one incoming and outcoming edge must be on the cycle. And this is done by checking actually that you, you, you go from, if you go from x to y and from y to z, then y is on the pass. And it cannot be the case that there is a node that is not on the pass, right? So you must actually go through, through this guy. And last but not least, there is the, the, the famous uh, connectedness constraint that makes sure uh, that all the cities have been reached have been 
uh, on your cycle. So you, you, you start from the starting node, this guy has been reached. And then when you reach the node and, act, and, and this node leads on the path or on the cycle to another node uh, Y, then this is also reachable. And, and uh, finally, we stipulate it must not be the case that there is a node that has not been reached. Okay, so this is now an encoding of the Hamel cycle problem uh, in plain normal logic programs without uh, aggregates or cardinality constraints. And it's for the purpose of illustration since we want to illustrate grounding algorithms for normal rules. Okay, now we need a couple of concepts and let's uh, check them out next. In fact, you've seen already all of the, these concepts except for the very last one in the introduction when we already talked about grounding for the very first time. So an important concept for the grounding algorithms we'll be looking at uh, is safety. So a rule is safe if each of its variables occurs in a positive body literal. And accordingly, a program is safe if it consists of safe rules only. This is a very important concept and we rely on this, or let's say the grounding algorithm that we look at, rely on this property. In fact, there are other grounding algorithms that take other properties uh, to make grounding easier, but this is the one that we rely on. And this is, I would say, also the most um, common one nowadays. At least Gringo, the grounder, and the other grounder, the DLB instantiator, also use uh, this concept uh, as, a, as a requirement on the logic programs that you formulate. Anyway, then there is the term universe and the atom base. Actually, I use these notions here because we will actually use them also as something that grows. So more or less the grounder uh, sees the facts and this is its atom base and it sees uh, rules, it instances, it sees more atoms and hence this guy will be, will be more or less uh, increasing. And in the same roughly with the term universe, even though we concentrate mainly on the atom base. For the logicians among you, you may remember that actually there's a, the notion Herbrand universe and Herbrand base. Again, these are similar notions but not the same because here things are intended to grow over time right so the, anyway the term universe is the set of all constants in your program or in the program that we look at and again simplification i'm not looking at function symbols and terms that you can build from function symbols we just look at constants here and then the atom base is the set of all ground atoms that we can form over the predicates and uh, the elements from the term universe right okay then um then we have the ground instances of rules and this is you get the ground instance of a, of a rule simply and simply is of course in quotes because we are just studying how to do that by replacing all variables with elements from the term universe but mathematically this is more or less the idea right so you have your rule with variables and this gives you the, all its ground instance by systematically replacing all the variables with the elements from the term universe okay uh, Next, the ground instantiation of a logic program is just an extension of, of the notion of a ground instance of a rule. But the only thing I want you to remember is that we use this function ground of P to denote the ground instantiation of the logic program. That is the union of all ground instances of all rules in the program that we are considering. Okay, I think all these uh, concepts you've already seen uh, in the introduction three section. Now, a unify you may not yet have seen before, then I would recommend Wikipedia to you. But most of you, I guess, have. So a unifier is a, sub a variable substitution. So it takes variables and maps them onto, well, other variables or ground terms. And normally we are interested in ma mapping them onto ground terms. And here again, ground terms are simply constants. And But the property is more or less that a unifier takes two expressions and let it be atoms, right? So P of A and P of X. And well, P of A and P of X are not the same, but they have the same predicate symbol P. But you can make them the same by replacing the X here by A. And then once you replace the X and P of X by, with A, you have also P of A here, P of A here, and then both are the same. So in this case, I only reply, applied this um, substitution, this unifier to one of the expressions, but you can imagine that you can apply them to both. Let's say you have P of Y and P of X, and then you can replace Y here, X here by A, and then both are P of A, and they are then uh, the same. Anyway, this was already much more explanation that I wanted to, to, to provide, but this is more or less the idea. A unifier of two expressions is a variable substitution, and once you apply them to both expressions, 
they are the same. And again, I think this is a very common, a very common uh, concept in, in, in computer science, of course, in logic or in, 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 proof, in proof theory, uh, logic programming, and, and, and so on and so forth. Right? No, no, no problem for you to briefly deepen this notion if you need, if need be. And now I zip it and let's look now at our first example, uh, where we actually apply just naive grounding uh, on the Hamiltonian circuit example we've seen before. And here we will basically apply the ground, this naive ground instantiation that we have mathematically described in such a simple way. And here it is. So for simplicity, let's simply count the number of ground instances we get for each rule. So keep in mind, we look at a problem instance, and our problem instance uh, consists of uh, four uh, cities, A, B, C, D. This is our term universe. Uh, so four cities, then we have seven edges between them, plus one starting node. This gives us 12 facts that come from the problem instance. Hence, there is there's no instantiation happening. These are just 12 facts. Okay, now we have uh, three rules with two variables three rules with three variables and three rules with one variable. And as you can see, when we have two variables, we get for each possibility here, we look at the edge here. We can put here one of the four cities here and one of the four cities here. So we get four times four, 16 possibilities. And since we have three of them, we get 60 plus 60 plus 60, 48 uh, rules. Now, this is analogous for, uh, for the rules that have three variables, just that we have here four times four times four, which gives us 64 instances for each rule, and hence we have three of them. And last but not least, for the, for the, the rules with a single, single variable, we only get four instances per rule, so this gives us uh, 12 here. And then all in all, and actually I pre-calculated this before, this makes 264 instances, right? And uh, well, this is not very, very much, but it's, it's quite something if you look actually with, with how many, we have just nine, uh, nine rules here plus, plus some facts, and this gives us nonetheless 264 uh, ground instances. In fact, many of them are superfluous, obsolete, we do not even need them. And let's actually look at, uh, at some, some examples and because they this will give us ideas on how to improve our grounding algorithm. Actually, there was no grounding algorithm so far. The only thing we did or I did was take the rules, sy systematically replace uh, the, the constants for all the variables and that's what we get. That's more or less the maximum grounding we can get. Okay, good. So let's look a little bit at possible improvements. Oh, oh, I'm afraid this claim was a bit too bold. Actually, before we look at further improvements in the next uh, section, I first want to discuss with you a little bit more the redundancies this um, type of grounding, this mathematical grounding actually uh, produces. Okay, good. Now let's look just at this uh, simple rule here where we say, well, we have an edge x, y, and in case we didn't omit it, uh, it should be on the path. Okay, now we have two variables, hence we get altogether 16 instances. And let's just look at two of the packages. Let's actually look at all the edges that uh, potentially leave uh, node A and D. So in fact, looking at, at our graph, we see that from A, we can only go to B and to C. And to, and to be honest, we know that because we know the full extent of the edge predicate. We know there are seven edges and by stable model semantics, by closed world reasoning, we know that all the edges that are left out uh, are supposed to be false. Hence, a this very first rule where we say, oh, we talk about edge AA. Well, there is no edge AA, hence this guy here is false. Hence, we, this whole rule here actually is, is completely redundant. We don't need it. The same actually for, um, let me check. So we can go, we can go from A to B. We, can, we can't go from A to D, so this rule also is uh, redundant. But we can go from A to C. So the only rules that make sense in this context are the second and uh, the third. Now let's just, even though I think you got the idea, let's look, just look again at, at D. So from D, we can, here it's a, even more drastic in quotes, right? Because from D we can only go to A, hence the, only the first rule makes sense, and the, the, the last three here are redundant, we don't need them, they will never apply, they will never contribute to a stable model. Now, okay, we, what, what, what we see actually is that in case we have 
already complete knowledge over a predicate like edge here, right? We know exactly what is true and what is false. We can actually only ground rules right from the beginning only for those uh, tuples, for these pairs x, y that are in the, in the edge relation. That is only the, the edges that really, that really exist and we don't even have to produce the other rules. Here the, the second and the third and here the last three, right? And this is hints already at the first improvement that we will be doing which will be called bottom-up grounding. So where we start from the facts and edges, of course, is, 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 a, is a predicate that gives us facts. And then these facts are, are completely determined. And then we can only, then we look at, 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 at rules that have these facts in their body. And then we only have to produce the instances for the facts that are really present that are true. And for those uh, instances that, that are not there, they must be false and we don't have to produce any rules. Okay, that's already one, one idea. And of course, this idea, here we only talked about the base case from the facts to the first set of rules, but you can imagine that you can iterate this and this will be called later on bottom-up grounding. Well, actually the facts are one source for eliminating redundancies. The others are arithmetic predicates. And keep in mind here we have, for instance, the, the other rule, which even has uh, 64 instances because we have three variables, x, y, and x prime and here we can just look at the at the arithmetic predicate and look if we instantiate this here uh, with completely with a at, at least here at this point here if we let's we have x and x prime we would use a in both cases we generate a, a obviously wrong arithmetic expression because a is not smaller strictly smaller than itself but you see actually since there is this other variable we nonetheless get all these, all these other four possibilities. So we only have to look actually at, um, at uh, those instances which satisfy the arithmetic uh, predicates. And this is for instance a smaller b. This, this makes sense, right? And keep in mind, uh, perhaps from the very first uh, uh, section about grounding, that in Gringo, the grounder, all ground terms are totally ordered. Right? So no matter which, when you take two ground terms, no matter what they are, whether they have numbers or function symbols or whatever, they are all, always comparable. And this is actually one nice thing that we always know that we can evaluate these guys here, right? So in this case also, just by not even generating the rules that falsify right away uh, arithmetic uh, expressions, we can gain, uh, we can eliminate, we can gain a lot of space, but we can eliminate a lot of redundant rules right from the beginning. Okay, now, now that we have seen uh, these, these source of unnecessary rules, let's design a grounding algorithm that takes this into account. And as I already mentioned, this guy is called bottom-up grounding.